the music begins to play. The smell of forgeries in the air. <laughs> the game is afoot. Hey, this is Simeon, and yeah, just a little bit of mystery here. You know, it reminds me of the inspiration that I feel when I unwrap one of these beautiful instruments because each one has a different uh, character and a different history behind it. And this one in particular has a really interesting tale to tell. It's a 1787 French harpsichord built by Pascal Taskin, who was one of the most prominent uh, instrument builders at the time. It's a double manual harpsichord with uh, three sets of strings. You have two uh, longer sets of strings called eight foot stops, an upper and lower. You have a four foot stop, which is really a nice bright sound. And then you have the tutti stop that plays the upper and lower eight and the four together. It's really kind of cool. And also, you know, because harpsichords were unlike piano fortes or our modern day piano, they put in these really cool things called uh, stops or additional uh, mechanisms. The Lautenzug stop or the lute stop, you have two of those, one for the upper and lower. It muted the strings in such a way that uh, it provided just like a really kind of a plucked almost sound. And then you have the peu de buffle stop, which is kind of unique to this particular harpsichord. And that was what I was playing at the very beginning. And you know what? It sort of reminds me of a mystery, almost like a detective mystery or a uh, Murder, She Wrote or Columbo, because it's really kind of crazy. You know, you do need the full version of contact for this instrument. It comes in multi presets. You're hearing the 440 presets, and we'll we'll venture into the 415 area really soon. So, what I've discovered with these is that having the different stops, you're going to experience so many cool uh, differences in the tone characteristics. The way that they've sampled this. So, for the eight foot stops, the upper and lower, you have eight variations, and the four foot stop, Lautenzug stop, and the uh, Po de Boeuf. Uh, only have four variations, so so let's load. Let's load up the uh, the eight foot stops first. Let's go to the upper eight foot stop, and I just uh, have these in my quick load here, and I just drag and drop them in the top. So here we go. This is the eight foot, the upper upper eight foot. I was hitting the sustain pedal. And I've got to remember, harpsichords did not have sustain pedals back then. So yeah, so let's try that again. Now this has a nice key range. Goes to this E here and the keyboard display on, in contact will show you the key range. So we've got here. So we've got E, uh, E0 to, well, let's see. E, to, e to F, E to F5. Okay, so E0 to F5. And the sustain actually, so since you can't hit the sustain pedal, you have to, you know, sustain it by holding it down. And that keeps the plectrum off of the string, keeps it from resetting. Okay, that's the upper eight foot. And now let's go to the lower eight foot.
So this is the upper and lower eight foot stops together. Now they weren't sampled together, but what we have here, we're just layering the, uh, the things together to get that beautiful sound. It, it's just beautiful. like 12 string guitars or mandolins and some of the other stringed instruments, when you have multiple strings uh, together, it just creates a, a richness and even something like a chorusing effect because of the little minute details in the tuning. So that's what we hear. Like the sound of this harpsichord. It's just, it's got, it's got a richness to it. Um. Yeah, really cool. With these harpsichords, because we don't have a velocity scaling like you would in a piano, we have to have variations. You've got eight variations of note down and then four variations of note up, and that is for the upper and lower eight foot stops. And so with the four foot stop, the Lautenzug stops, and the Peu de Boeufle stops, you have four variations of note down, and they have four variations of the note up, the, where the plectrum resets. So that just keeps you from uh, just having that, you know, we call it the machine gun effect, and because you would, you know, it's just going to be the same thing over and over again. So that creates a lot of uh, variation and a lot of interest when you're playing. Okay, let's uh, let's look at the four foot stop. And the four foot stop just adds a really nice brightness to things. gets up there. One of the cool things that I that I saw when you look at the pictures of these harpsichords, you see these um, these knee levers and the knee levers help you to kind of um, go between the different stops. Uh, so so you've got your hands free uh, so you can you know while you're playing you can just Bump, uh, bump those uh, those levers and change the stops and the positions. So I think that was that was pretty cool. Uh, and and again, no sustained pedals or sustenuto pedals or none of that. Um, okay, so here's where we're going to get into something really interesting, and that's the uh, peu de boeuf le stop. And what this is, you know, the plectrum. The plectrum was made out of different materials, and the uh, the peu de boeuf le is like the skin. It's like leather. It was like uh, almost like buffalo leather or something. It was just like a very uh, interesting material at the time, but it it allowed you to create a very uh, softer sound, a very softer sound, and and some might even say a, a dreamy sound. So let's take uh, let's take a listen to that. and soft that is. Uh, it, it's not as harsh sounding sometimes as you would think a harpsichord with those very high frequencies. Very beautiful. Okay, and I forgot to check out the Lattenzug, and Lattenzug is like a lute stop, uh, which is kind of a really neat, uh, neat stop to have. 
and we've got upper and lower uh, Lautenzug stops. Let's, uh, let's load up the lower. You hear it, it's kind of like a, like, almost like a, a lute, uh, like you're plucking the strings. Strolling around telling their stories, uh, you know, about about Robin Hood and his merry men. <laughs> okay, that's the lower, and let's see, the upper Lautenzug stop. And, and they each one have different characteristics. Yeah, this one has a little brighter tone. Hey, diddly, diddly, diddly. I audiate a lot. I, I think audiation is something um, I I see um, I see sounds. I see sounds and uh, visualize things, uh, visualize scenes and colors and all kinds of wild things sometimes. Yeah, very cool. And then of course we've got the two D stop which uh, let's just take a listen to that once more time. Once more, once more. <laughs> and listen to how fat that is. I worry. I mean, little things bother me. I'm a worrier. I mean, little insignificant details. I lose my appetite. I can't eat. Okay, so here's where things get interesting. So this harpsichord was actually built in 1787 by Pascal Taskin who was very prominent, who was one of the most prominent harpsichord builders in France at the time, as we mentioned before. Uh, but if you notice on the front of the harpsichord, you will see 1636, but Rutgers. And Taskin, you know, he, he went and engraved the 1787 as if, um, you know, that was when he was supposed to have restored the 1636 Rutgers harpsichord. Well, come to find out, uh, you know, uh, as all good Columbo mysteries are. Actually, uh, there is one thing. The one that commits the crime, the hubris of the criminal mind, will always leave a clue behind and give themselves away. And so he, he just had to engrave his name and give himself credit for this harpsichord, uh, but, put somebody else's name on there because, you know, this is what I don't understand. I mean, somebody that is so prominent uh, would have to, you know, forge another harpsichord maker's name in order to increase the value. I mean, talk about uh, insecurity in musicians. I mean, listen, I know I struggle with it, but this kind of takes it up to another level uh, when you're literally, you know, building a harpsichord and trying to pass it off as, uh, something that is a lot older and to 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 sort of increase the value. 
Um, I, I guess, you know, talk about imposter syndrome, but, but you know, he made a beautiful instrument. I, I, I mean, what I've been hearing is just beautiful and, and, and kind of unique in the tone and everything. So it was, it's just like, you know, we are our worst critics. <laughs> and it's like, man, just embrace who you are and um, because you have something beautiful to bring into this world, you know? But I thought that was an amazing mystery that we can uncover. And you know, he even put the uh, put the buffalo stop in there, and which you don't see very often. So, uh, you know, Pascal, you did a great job. You know, just just put your name on it. You know, it's just uh, it's just amazing. Okay, so let's uh, let's get back to it uh, to to right now. You know, I appreciate these instruments because uh, they take you into so many amazing places, unexpected places. I, I mean, I never thought we would have a harpsichord she wrote episode uh, or a, a Perry Mason episode where, yes, I built the harpsichord, I confess, you know. You didn't kill Thompson, but you did, Mr. Wells. Yes, yes, I killed Matt Thompson. I killed him. Okay, so you know what I always love to do. I like to take these harpsichords into today's world uh, through the use of effects. Uh, so let's go. Okay, I, you can see I've kind of got uh, good old faithful here at the, but let's, uh, but what I wanna do, I wanna go ahead and insert this new plugin. It's called Trimmer, and it's from a good friend of mine uh, from uh, uh, Beep Boop Audio, Owen Bolig, and he is behind a lot of your favorite uh, contact libraries, but he just came, uh, just came out with this new effect. So I'm just gonna pull this up and see what happens. And let's see which, um, okay, so we've got the Lautenzug stop, the, um, yeah. And I am gonna use the sustain pedal here. Crazy. We can change the tempo. This is called a, uh, it's a dual frequency delayed reverb. really slow tempos here. So let's see if we can get something a little more, here we go, like a 16th triplet against a, a half. This is really interesting. Okay, let's see, here we go. We've got uh, 16th dotted against an eighth, uh, eighth note dotted.
and I've got my good friend, uh, Black Hole. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pin this open so we can have this open. And let's uh, pull up Black Hole. Now, this is the new uh, Black Hole Immersive. And they have re redone the entire signal chain. So you have stereo signal chain from beginning to end. So it's very beautiful. So I'm going to just stay with that Lautenzug stop here. And um, now let's put trimmer back on. Just see what it sounds like. what I wanted to do, uh, just, I was so curious to hear, is that, um, is, is the, um, is that put the buffalo stop with these, um, with these effects. So let's do this. Um, let's go to the put the buff. And I'm just going to kind of keep that same preset. Kill that wet. It's really amazing. So that's it. Uh, that's just the dry signal. And while we're here, let me let you just take a listen to the 415 tuning. Okay, here we go. This is 415. This is just the dry. Now let's just jump to 440 real quick, just to hear the difference. It's almost, it's almost like a, uh, a whole half step difference, but it just adds a, a very nice, it's, it's, a, it's unusual. It's hard to describe uh, what you're hearing. And same preset on black hole. Shit. 
really interesting uh, uh, pitch shifting along with the um, along with the um, the delays and the reverb. So I just switched the reverb mode to big stereo. Let's listen to that. stuff and let's uh, just for fun let's just put the 2d stop um, at 440 and this will give us a big uh, big full sound Simeon from PraiseTracks.com on behalf of Real Samples telling you to always stay joyful. And I'd say this case is closed.